Hey guys, I'm Nate, welcome back to the workshop. Today we're going to be taking a look at how you can build your own very simplified version of a potentially complicated machine. Steam engine is one of the earliest ways that people were able to harness heat and turn it into motion. We're not going to be building anything that can move something the size of a train, but we are going to try building something that uses heat to create motion. The supplies we need are really simple. A tea light candle, a couple of pieces of cork sheet, and a very thin metal tube. Ideally, we would be using a thin copper tube since copper conducts heat better than aluminum, but copper tubing this small proved very difficult to find. I picked this aluminum tube up at a hobby store for about two bucks. The interior diameter of this aluminum tube is probably only about 1 16th of an inch, maybe one and a half millimeters. Tea lights are available at a lot of places. I got mine at a craft store in a pack of 50 for three bucks. My cork sheets are also from a craft store, and I think they're usually designed for going on the bottom of coasters, but we're gonna use them for something different. The basic idea is we'll have our tub full of water, our cork sheets will float on that with our candle on top of it. Then a small piece of our aluminum tubing will come up through one side of the cork, wrap in a coil above the flame, and then go down through the cork on the other side. With our coil full of water, when we light our candle, the heat should turn the water into steam, which will expand and push out the bottom. To start out, we want to put a nice circular bend in the middle of part of our tube. It's important we don't kink the metal tube because we do need the water and steam to be able to travel all the way through it. So let's try wrapping it around this bottle of paint to see if we can get a nice smooth curve in it that doesn't kink. Alright, that worked out pretty well. We can see that we've got the aluminum tube going up, making one complete circuit, and then heading back down through the other side. We have too much metal tube on the sides here, so we want to trim that off. And we want to measure to make sure we have the right length so that it's situated just above our candle flame for maximum heat. To get a good measurement of where we should cut our tube, let's light our candle and then position our tube right over it so we can see how long we want it to be on the sides. We now have a fairly stable flame on our candle, so we can measure the height that we want with our coil. You may also notice that the loop I put in the aluminum is large enough that the sides of our aluminum tube fit on the sides of the candle. We don't want to use something that gives us such a tight coil that they would run into the candle. With our candle on our cork sheets, we can see exactly how far down we need the sides of our aluminum tubes to come. We do want our tubes to extend a little bit below the level of the cork. They'll push down below the cork into the water, and then we'll angle them slightly to give our engine some drive. I'll use this pipe cutting tool to cut off the excess of our aluminum without crimping the ends. Now this aluminum tubing is so thin that it barely fits in our pipe cutter, so even after using the pipe cutter I have to give it a little bit of help. A quick test of blowing into one side lets us know that we still have a good flow all the way through our tube. Now our cork sheets are a little bit larger than we need them to be and we don't want any excess weight or drag, so let's cut a slightly smaller circle out of our larger circles. The diameter of this electrical tape is slightly wider than the stance of our aluminum pipe, so that should be a good size. I should also say, if you have thicker sheets of cork, you probably don't need to stack two of them together the way I'm going to. This just provides a little bit of extra stability as it floats on the water. Now we need to poke holes in both sheets of cork so that the sides of our aluminum tube can run down through the cork into the water that will be below. Let's just use a spare piece of our aluminum tubing to stab through the cork. I used this spare piece of tubing because poking through the cork can plug up the hole with some of the cork material, and we want to be sure we have good flow on the tube that will be carrying our water and steam. We can now see the basic design that we're going to be going for. With the bottom points of our tube angled slightly, we should get motion that drives our entire engine in a circle. Water inside the coil should heat up from the candle, turn into steam, and then be forced out the bottom of the tubes. Let's slightly bend the bottoms of the tubes so that as the steam is forced out, it's at an angle that will then push our engine into spinning. Of course, we need to be very careful as we bend these to make sure we don't kink the metal. Let's just 
just blow through the tube again to make sure we still have good airflow. Yep, still good. There's still good flow through the tube, just what we want. Now let's fit the two ends of our tube down through the cork. It'll take some angling and twisting a little bit to get it in there now that we've bent the ends, but it should fit just fine, and cork is pretty flexible. You can see the tube comes up through one side, coils around, goes back down to the other, and with the two ends bent at opposing angles, hopefully when the steam is ejected, it should cause the whole thing to spin. We can see our setup, but before we put the candle on and light it, there's one more step we need to take. We want some water to start inside of our metal coil. So let's briefly take it off of our cork and use it as a straw to suck a little bit of water up through the tube and then reinstall it. All right, there we go. Got water coming through. Tastes like metal. Let's carefully line our candle up right underneath our coil. When we light that off, it should give enough heat that our whole engine begins to spin. I spilled a little bit of candle wax on the sides, but that shouldn't affect the movement very much. There we go. Now this setup is a little bit finicky. Sometimes it does a really good job of pulling more water in and continuing to spin, and sometimes it seems to sort of stall. I think you have to get it in just the right spot so it's really doing a good job of heating the water up. But I have had times where I got this to keep spinning almost perpetually for up to 20 minutes. I wanna see if I can do something to illustrate how much the water is circulating through this coil. I'm gonna try adding a little bit of blue dye to some water and then filling the coil with that water. Hopefully, when that heats up, we'll be able to see the blue squirt out of the bottom jets. Now I am a little bit worried that as I try and set this back in the water, some of it will just drain right out of the tube and start coloring the water in our tub prematurely. You can see a little bit of blue water is starting to escape on one side, but not too much of it. So, hopefully this will still give us a good illustrative example. There you have it, how to take a little bit of aluminum tube, a tea light candle, and a little bit of cork mat and turn it into a working steam engine. This whole project only costs about five bucks for all of the supplies, and it's pretty cool to watch it work. Thanks for joining us for this project today, and remember to come gear yourself up with products and merch at thekingofrandom.com. See you there. Whee! Round it goes. <clears throat> all right, hang on, reset. Ow! Gosh, all right, that comes out really hot. And powerfully, keep trying to cover farther up my arm and it just keeps shooting even more far up my arm.